Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. thank you for joining me. Welcome to 48 Hours of Factorial. This is a save that uh, we started on Thursday night last week, which was uh, middle of December. We were just doing like a, a stream thing with a uh, Factorial modded pack with uh, like Bob's Angels and a bunch of others, some some helper mods and stuff. Notably we had the, the loader mod. And anyway, I just wanted to kind of do like a tour around the factory because this is what a factory looks like after 40 hours, 48 hours of gameplay. And, um, anywhere between, let's see, P, C player count, 201 players. 201 distinct people have connected over the last uh, four or five days or so. This has been running nonstop. We had a few crashes here and there, created some desync reports for the factory of devs. But, um, this is, uh, this is what we're at so far. So I guess let's just run all the way to the north of the base. You'll note that, uh, I do have... Some some pretty good movement speed right now. Hopefully I don't get run over by a train. I'm currently using Bob's Power Armor Mark IV. Didn't quite manage to get to the the Iron Man suit. Um, we need a little bit more stuff. Efficiency Module 8 and then we can unlock the Iron Man suit. Power Armor Mark V. But, um... Yeah. So, apparently this is the, the defensive wall. I know that there's a number of players who, like, really, really tend to want to play defensive mode. They love to push out, they love to go out and, and try to secure new resources, and that's just, like, their ideal way of playing. And thank God they exist, because I hate doing that kind of stuff. And, uh, they've clearly done a great job of, of securing new patches and, and basically preventing... Look at this, I'm faster than a speeding train. Anyway, yeah, I've got, like, what? A lot of legs. A lot of exoskeleton Mark III's. I keep getting lost because I'm not used to being this far away from the actual bus. Without these power legs, though, it, uh, it it takes such an excessively long amount of time to actually even get from one side of the factory to another. I think that I'm not really doing the factory justice right now because I'm playing so far zoomed out and I'm able to run so fast that it doesn't probably seem quite as big as it would otherwise be. Toward the end of the campaign, or toward the end of the session, we had to start slowing the game down. Um, slowest we got was like 45% uh, of the normal game speed because most people had issues running the factory and the server server was more than capable of keeping up but the uh, people who were trying to connect they would end up in a position where the save file was so large that they would get a, a copy of the save and then they would load the save and then they would spend 5, 10, 15 minutes trying to catch up because so much would happen from when they received the save to when they got the save and like they actually could able they were able to actually join in that uh, they were just unable to actually catch up in time, and then they would end up desyncing because so much had changed. So then we would start to, uh, to try to pause anytime someone would join, but that didn't usually uh, lend itself towards a lot of gameplay. So, got a lot of Beacon Mark IIs, pretty good in Bob's mods. Um, I remember at the peak we got up to... I think it was like 80,000... 90,000 iron plate per minute. We don't currently have that much being done because we don't need it. But, um... One of my favorite things about the safe is that we were using lots of loaders. There's still one tier of loaders beyond this. We never actually got to the point where we needed to use the uh, the extremely fast loaders, which I believe can move 200 thirds items per second, just like a extremely fast belt. But um, we have something of a conventional bus-ish that we had at the beginning of the factory, but with so many different players and so many different people focusing on so many different things, um, it's quite easy to see that we would... Uh, I'm already. <laughs> I'm trying very hard to not actually fix anything. Like, like, oh, I'm, oh I could, I could. Th that doesn't look right. We should use both sides of that belt so that they could load up both sides. Anyway, um, so yeah, we tried to do a conventional bus style type thing, but it, with so many different players trying to do so many different things, it ended up being a very decentralized factory. Um, I remember ge in general to the north we had modules. Um, we had various tiers of. Processing happening all over the place. This is uh, one of our very, very commonly used um, layouts for crushing into... This is just a crushing setup using loaders. This looks like a pure storage and we have supply apparently coming in through a requester storehouse. You got two loaders pulling out just ridiculous amounts of ore going into crushers, going into sorting, which then goes up to here. We, yeah, we've gotten to the point where the robots are actually able to keep up I mean, look, just look at how stupid fast they are. There's only... Wow, that's surprising. 
There's only 1,400 logistic robots here? I don't think that that's actually correct. We must have multiple networks. Yeah, we have three networks. The primary network appears to have... No, it is. It's showing, uh, 1,500 robots. That is very curious. I distinctly remember having upwards of 10,000 at one point. I wonder what's happened. Possible that there was a major biter attack or something that I missed and, uh, things changed or... Or I'm not really sure. But, um, here's a different setup that was being used. Looks like for... Flotation cell refining. Again, using this this uh, warehouse slash loaders layout, which I personally just absolutely love. I just... I've explained it before during streams. I love the concept of... I picture it like a vertical thing, right? Like, this is a conveyor belt that it, it goes up and then dumps into a big, huge warehouse. And then that warehouse has sorting facilities of its own, which then it uses to filter and sort. Because most of these loaders are set up with... Uh, well, not these ones in particular, but a lot of these loaders will be set up with filters on them, and they will send certain resources down certain paths. And so that's kind of how I've pictured these warehouses functioning. And uh, it works very well. Over here we've got another setup. This one looks like it goes one step further. This is the... Uh, what are these called? They are called... Chunks. And then these are the crystals. Apparently there was another step used here. Chunks into crystals into other stuff. Various amounts of sulfuric acid used here and there. If you're wondering why the... The game keeps on changing its its appearance. It's because I'm using the, the tier three night vision goggles from Bob's Warfare, which apply a white screen effect instead of green or or blue or anything like that. So it was just night. This is what it looks like during the day right now. It's just now turning into daylight, so it's going to get brighter over time. We have some some train stations here that just very quickly unload into passive provider warehouses. We've got Javolite, uh, looks like Steerotite, got a crushing stone stone location there. Now, one thing I definitely want to show, showcase here is the uh, just sheer immensity of the solar grid that's used to power this factory. Also, I want to show the, the primary smelting setup. Looks like this. Uh, we, we tried. We tried for so long. Even, even using these stupid, stupid fast belts. We tried using belts, but there's just nothing that could be done. The belts cannot keep up. A lot of these furnaces, you'll notice uh, right over here, ended up with a crafting speed somewhere between 100 and 130. Um, in some of our setups. And these aren't even maxed out yet. These are still just using tier 4 speed modules and uh, tier 4 raw productivity. Like, we could take it even farther. We could have these these machines crafting at uh, 200 plus crafting speed. And at that rate, you just, you cannot possibly use belts and inserters. So loaders, uh, I can't even get where I want to go. There's a problem there. There's iron plate on that. Darn it! Take the I fixed it. Sorry, I'm not supposed to be fixing things, but uh, why is that making steel anyway? It really shouldn't be. Darn it! I guess it looks like somebody actually did set that one up to make a little bit of steel. Never mind. In general, this was this this whole grid here was iron. These these two rows were iron. These two rows were copper, and then we had other setups further up that were for. The different various metals we had, like lead and and uh, tin and and blah blah blah, more more stuff, right? But uh, anyway, long story short, you just you can't you can't possibly feed these machines fast enough using inserters. There's just not enough sides to feed them from. I mean, we have one going in and two going out because of the productivity factor. You notice that uh, right over here again it says productivity. Most of them have productivity 100. Some of them have 125. If we actually had maxed out furnaces, these are only electric multipurpose furnaces number one. There's another level beyond that. So, we'll probably end up in a situation where we have like two two extremely fast loaders feeding in and three or four belts of extremely fast loaders feeding out. Um, just to support those fact those furnaces. So here begins the solar grid. As you can see, it's, it's rather large. I, again, I thank everyone who who has that tendency, who, who likes to work on one specific task and sticks with it. I mean, the, the amount of effort that went into building and enhancing the solar grid, like... I think it was one person in particular. XD Board is uh, one of the names that's appearing there, Flocken. Um, Wild Wolf, I remember, in most of the sessions that I was able to participate in. You know, they get, they get it in their head that they want to be able to get, get us powered through the night. And thank God, because we got kind of beacon crazy toward the end there. Um, 
So yeah, um, I I got to admit I'm very very much looking forward to the the not dot fifteen patch because I think we could go bigger. Uh, I remember reading quite a bit about how how much better the game runs on not dot fifteen versus not dot fourteen and how many beacons smelting? What is this about? I don't think I've actually even looked at this area yet. We were trying out a uh, a mod called crafting combinators where you can create a combinator and then place that adjacent to a uh, an assembly machine and control the recipe of it using that. It didn't seem to work with the furnaces, which is unfortunate because most of the Bob's furnaces required to set the recipe. So we were hoping that we could use those those combinators to control the recipe of the furnaces, but apparently it only applies to assembly machines, so that's unfortunate. Sadly. Um, looks like these are power switched column or uh, rows of, of very, very heavily beaconed stuff here. These are just generic electric furnaces that don't have a specified recipe, so it looks like there's multiple feeds that can be used. Uh, looks neat. Looks cool. It's pretty far away from the main storage area, but it should still be all connected to the primary grid. I mean, the, the amount of logistic coverage that we had was pretty ridiculous. Again, not really sure what happened to all the robots. I know we had a lot more than that. Well, crafting speed 70... plus 3,040%. So it has taken every little bit of thermal water that comes in. Yeah. So not dot fifteen will probably allow us to go bigger because the game will run better. And hopefully my my real hope is that uh we had numerous of the players submitting desync reports, because we we kept getting them. Every three hours or so we would run into some serious desync issues and we would have to rehost. We tried doing a local client, we tried doing a server, we tried adding mods, removing odds uh mods, troubleshooting specific mods, and uh generally it was it was kind of like an alpha experience just trying to make the game better. And uh, I'm hoping that the factory devs can use those reports and maybe figure out exactly what it was. I do remember reading on the bug report forum that uh, Receding, I think, said that he was able to identify like five or six different potential causes for desyncs based on just one of the reports we submitted. So hopefully we'll see uh, some 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 changes based on this session. My my plan, I think, is that um, I may end up doing this on a, on a weekly basis, just... Uh, Starting a new server on a Thursday or Friday and uh, running it over the weekend and just kind of seeing where we get. I had, a, I had just so much fun. I gotta admit, the game is just so much more enjoyable when you play with a group of people. Even if that peop group of people is dynamic and uh, in varying in number, it's just so much more interesting than playing it all by yourself. Um, time seems to go by so much quicker. You don't really get, at least for me, you don't get quite as much of a compulsion to start over because... There's a lot of people who con contributed to this factory, and it's not just me, and it, it's difficult to say, wow, you know, I know you put hours and hours into solving that power problem, but uh, we're going to start over. No, 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 we're going to continue. And we're going to continue, and we're going to continue, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and stupider and stupider, and uh, it's going to be quite quite big by the end of it. So, anyway, once again, thank you to all of the 201 different people who connected over time. Appreciate you being uh, involved in this factory. We may continue this specific one, probably will, in fact, until uh, the next major patch comes out and we can maybe get some more stability. But at this point, we are running into such persistent desync issues that I'm not sure that uh, it can actually be maintained. Uh, and the reason I say that is that when I logged on this morning, again, my server had crashed. And when I went to see if there was a rehost that would, someone had done, usually what happens is overnight if I'm gone, someone will take a save and rehost it. And uh, it will persist on that server until I can come back and rehost on my computer. And... Uh, there was none available, which makes me think that uh, they ran into some intermittent issues through the night as well. So, anyway, once again, thank you for joining, thank you for, t for, for participating, and if you if you missed the opportunity to join, just be aware that these types of things are happening, and we would love to have you. I want to see as many people join and, and participate in the mass multiplayer aspect of Factorio as possible. So, once again, I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.